understand their question more by getting some more of the like the background information and all that. And so, what I like to say is, a uh, research is interactive and depending on asking or increasing complex new questions. So a lot of times, like in our last session, we talk about initially you have a bigger picture and you have a big idea and maybe you know what kind of uh, uh, a problem you're going to focus on or what kind of concern and you have this bigger area and then you try to form a narrower peak of question. But a lot of students what they do is they start just crafting their peak of question without doing that literature search. So what I would like to say is um, you know, you have you need to have enough background information and enough uh, knowledge about your question and then know what's existing out there. Because when we are doing research, right, a lot of times, basically why we are doing research? Research we are either doing to create new knowledge and basically you're doing primary research, right, to discover that new knowledge or we are just identifying the gap in the research to fill that gap, right? Without the literature research and you won't know what has been done and what's gap out there and what's have not been done and then you know your your people question then might have some logic faults in it that leads you not finding much of the information. So so what construct a well built structure answerable cleaning question? So I would suggest people, when you have your people questions, ask relevant, will that answer matter? Answerable, can this question be answered by the research data? And that's very important, we are going to give an example uh, later on on that. And then, is my question clear, is, or is it ambiguous? And is this definite and objective? And also, is, my, is this research worthy of my time? Okay. Is the answer worth the work? So use relevant, ansible, clear, worthy criteria is scoring a well-built, structured, ansible, clinical question. Um, clinical question. So, um, and also, um, this is kind of like an um, a example. I, I want to ask you guys. This is kind of you know, one of the questions I got. And it's adult population. In adult population, does it be an evaluation of patient ACE scores compared with no use of ACE scores increase the longevity of patient provider relationship? So, do you think this is a relevant, answerable, clear, and worthy, you know, by using this criteria, is this a well-built, structured, and answerable clinical question? Anybody have some suggestions? I, I wouldn't say this is a bad question, and a, but I wouldn't say this is the best, good question. So, um, you know, um, but you know, that, that student have you know, trouble finding the literature to support this. And what do you think? So when you have this kind of question, what kind of question you have for this type of question? Do you think it's clear? What what what, what kind of suggestion you will have? Yes. Uh, is there a time portion of that Pico? It doesn't have a time portion. Okay, very good. That's the question you ask. You know the. Um, maybe, yeah, for this patient provider relationship, longevity, and yeah, time frame. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Make the population more specific. Make the popu population more specific in adult population. Yes. Maybe ask in what kind of clinical setting, right? Is this in the psychology office or is this in the primary care? And uh, what kind of setting? You know, what kind of population? Anybody else? Maybe it shouldn't say like increase because that gives direction to the question. Like instead of increase, like change or uh, the increase 
Uh, say it again. I'm not quite. Like instead of using increase. Uh huh. Just ask if it changes the relationship. Change the relationship. Okay. okay. Does it change the relationship of the patient, uh, patient physicians? Okay. Okay. A anything else? Do you think uh, um, by by looking at this, what kind of research data will support this? If you are going to do original research. Qualitative, qualitative. Then how do you collect that qualitative data? Is it possible to collect? I don't. Seems like it would at least take a really long time to collect the data because mm -hmm. you're going to have to wait for the all these patient provider relationships to end and measure the length of them, right? Uh huh. Okay. So maybe you could get it, it would take a long time. It will take a long time. And how do you how do you measure? Right? And how do you collect the data? Maybe use the physician's record, the provider's record or something uh -huh. to right. see if you get that data out. Right, there. right, right. Very good. Those are very good suggestions and good thoughts. So and um, when you have that, I will say, you know, ask those questions. And ask some of the, you know, factual questions, you know, um, who, what, where, when, and how. Just like that question, you know, somebody already asked when, and we also asked how, how this data can be collected, and what, what exactly, why, why, why this is important, you know, ACD, when you say AC, at first, oh, because I'm not a nurse or physician, when looking at ACE, I have to look at what ACE is. <laughs> what does ACE stand for? And you know, when you when you create your PICO question, your PICO question basically used to guide you later later on to break down your question into searchable components. So another thing is, I want to advise students not to use abbreviations because I have another student coming to me and says I have a hard time finding my literature, you know, and, and she used a lot of abbreviation, which is very natural for her because she's a nurse, right? But then for me, I'm not a nurse. I don't know what that means. I have to look it up. But then when you do your literature search, most likely a lot of times they don't use abbreviation. They spell out the whole thing. So, you know, remember to spell that out. Uh, and also, you know, by knowing, uh, I asking those questions that help you to know more about that question and also uh, uh, you, you know to know more about the value and the worthiness of that question. And for one questions, you know after we have um, usually you know um, as the nurses, physicians, they get more experiences, they, get, they ask less background uh, questions. And uh, instead, they you know, go ahead and ask the foreground questions. About where do you look for the background, uh, background, you know, background questions? Background questions, when we looking at says, you know, the what, when, and how, a lot of times, those are like the basic information not worthy to be in the primary search literature. So for the background questions, you don't go search MEDLINE for that background question. Usually find the background question in like a textbook or a review type of articles. Or uh, have you guys read, uh, use the uh, up-to-date database yet? Yes. I, I, I see some of you. Yes. Up-to-date is very good. Uh, uh, database for uh, background information, like if you want some information about a specific drug, uh, a specific procedure, you know, you go to that, uh, up to date. And uh, another thing is, um, so uh, for background and also textbook, you know, go to the textbook and to look for that. And then a foreground question, more like uh, it has to be uh, answered by uh, intervention and a comparable uh, uh, elements of it. So those type of questions, usually you will find it uh, the answer in the bedline search and those kind of uh, like database uh, primary uh, research uh, articles. 
So, and you all are, are kind of familiar with what's the pico, right? And it's all, I, I, I suspect it's already talked in your evidence base. So does your instructor uh, ask, is this the format in Q2 T or no T, uh, no T, just pico? Because I find some, you know, Sometimes they just emphasize on PICO, the first four parts, but without the 2T, and sometimes people ask, require the, you know, those two T's. What's the situation? I just wanted the one T time for us. Like time frame, that time. Type of study, right? Okay, okay, good. So um, I add another one, time, yeah, uh, not only time, but also type. What type of questions this is asking? And also, uh, another T is what type of studies you want to find. Because later on, I'm going to talk about depending on what type of questions, then you should uh, try to find the corresponding type of studies design for that specific question. So that's um, what we added here. So here's an example you know, uh, between a background and a foreground. A background, you know, I'm looking for the preventive force in, uh, yeah. say, this is the uh, foreground question, is to compare the Tai Chi, you know, maybe with other type of exercise to prevent force for the uh, elderly, and then the background, maybe I will look for, you know, what, what's the evidence has been there, uh, uh, is that already been done, uh, that, uh, that prevent force for the elderly. <coughs> and also, after you uh, construct your people question, I would ask this: What type of study best fits this research question? Okay. And what are the important research questions in the field in my topic? You know, so that requires you to do some kind of a rock literature search to see what's out there and what has been found and what areas further needs further exploration and would the proposed study fill the gap and better understanding okay so that's with that that means that you do have to do some kind of like a rough literature search before you have that research question being formulated this is very important so i would say you know, do some literature research before you can have a rough idea, and then but do some literature research before you form that question. And the reason for that is a well thought out focused research question leads directly to hypothesis and predict about the nature and direction and relationship between the variables under the study. And because of that, the question asks, asks the foundation of the study. So your question is very important. Forming a very effective, clear, answerable question is very, very important. So what type of answerable questions? These are some type of different type of answerable questions. You guys, I, I, I do not need to, you know, uh, uh, to spell out the definition. You are all very familiar. You just need to know what type of questions falls into this kind of gap category. And depending on your type of questions, these are the suggested type of study methodologies that related to to best answer that type of question. And uh, you'll find this table on my lead guide. And um, have you guys used my evidence-based lead guide? Okay, I have a specific lead guide for uh, the evidence-based research. So if you go to the library, I hope you are very familiar with the new website already. And if you go to Lead Guide, uh, I'm going to search for Lead Guide. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I would go to my picture, and these are all the guys, and you'll find the nursing 7220s. 
specifically for that course for evidence-based practice. And then today we are, you know, talking about the evidence-based research process specifically under us. So it has that PICO. And then I also have that uh, PICO template. Uh, depending on like what type of questions you have, these are different type of questions. Then how you can construct your PICO question using that template. Okay. And then this will help you to um, design your question and know what type of questions that you are asking. And here are uh, some of the uh, more additional tools uh, to help you to use. Uh, specifically for this one, and uh, in your handout, I also printed, uh, it's, this is a double-sided handout, and the first side is the questions, and the second side has that template at the back that you can use. Uh, the template basically helps you to form uh, your people questions, not only that, and uh, it also helps you to think about what type of question it is, and you know, and then it gives you some idea, uh, ideal type of studies that might uh, support you know that type of question. And then uh, remember last session we talked about the searchable terms using the Boolean logic. So uh, you know, by breaking down your PICO question into the searchable part and those search terms, and think about the synonyms, related terms we talked about it in last session, right? And this will help you to uh, later on to construct your Boolean logic search strategy. So this worksheet, I will uh, encourage people to use that. Uh, oh, I forgot. Um, and then, if you're looking at the clinical study categories, uh, it has definitions of different types of studies, type, and then at the end it has this table, that's which is also on my PowerPoint. And my PowerPoint, I will also send a copy to your instructor that can be posted on Blackboard too, so you don't have to, you know, uh, right now, uh, busy in taking notes. Any questions? And then, uh, you, you are probably also familiar with this pyramid, right? The level of evidence. So as you see, the highest level of evidence is systematic reviews. And the difference between these two is this provides a, a, a qualitative, but this is more of a quantitative, provide the statistic and those. So, and this table is also on that lead guide, okay? Uh, I'm thinking about for your DMP project, a lot of times you, uh, because you, are, you guys are clinical nurse, um, some PICO is good, you know, uh, I just want you to know there are some other, you know, um, framework, and depending on your project and your topic, that you might want to use some of the framework to help you to, you know, uh, frame your questions uh, better and to, you know, uh, think about your so like this clip help, uh, is mostly used for the health service management questions. If your question, if your research project, you know, falls into this category, great, you might want to use this framework. You know, C stands for client, L is location, I is improvement, P is professional. This is not on my lead guide, but like I said, the slide I will provide the slide for. Um, and here's another framework uh, called uh, Eclipse, and uh, uh, which is another one. Anybody heard about this too? Not at all. Okay. So if you want to uh, find more information, you know, um, if I, I don't know, have you guys chosen your think about your project yet? Your DMP? Some of you already. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, you might want to uh, think about using the different framework to help you uh, better guide your questions. And a lot of times nurses, you know, um, your research can be interdisciplinary. 
right? Sometimes your uh, research can fall into the social science category, not only in medicine but also social sciences, right? Because you guys, you know, deal with people and deal with culture. So this is another framework that used very often for social sciences and for librarians that for our research falls into the social science area, we often use this framework. So that's why I just want to introduce this to you. And that's um, very popular use, SPICE, for social science questions. And because we are going to more focus on the PICO, so um, I will talk a little bit more about the PICO. So PICO, you know, uh, these are the um, components that you already know. So P, not only for patient, population, problem, and that problem can be disease or condition of interest. And then you need to think about when population patient, you know, what kind of demographic factors in what kind of settings, um, you know, for that. So here example. Um, think about who and what you want, want to apply for the um, apply this evidence um, for a particular setting, a particular community, or for a particular group of people, elderly, you know, sexually active young women, you know, how do you, and how would you describe your client and settings? So this is a more detailed questions that you ask uh, yourself when you, uh, for that key. And type of intervention, that can be the treatment, diagnostic test, causative agent, and prognostic factor. And then, um, so when you consider that, and also you want to be more specific too, you know, like for this primary juice, you know, if that's intervention, you might think about how much and how often, and what exactly it might you know, consider. And type of comparison, you know, it can be some other type of comparison or it can be uh, nothing. So, um, you know, think about what alternatives, actions that might, you know, might try. And outcomes. So outcomes can be cure, duration of disease, prevention, death, side effect, pain, and well-being. So outcome is more like focusing on what am I hoping to accomplish. And there are two different types of outcomes. It can be patient-oriented outcomes or disease-oriented outcomes. So it's patient-oriented outcomes. These are the factors. And disease-oriented, um, so this is um, Uh, patient oriented. So again, to conclude that all the slides that we talked about and the question being asked determines appropriate research, architecture, strategy, and tactic to be used. Not the tradition, authority, expert, paradigm, or school of thought. So, you know, again, just to emphasize, you know, uh, having a good, constructive, Pico question is very, very important and is the fundamental for your later step. So we're going to do a case study here. And you all have your sheet. And here's another question that I got this week. So I use it as a case study. And uh, basically this student also having some difficulty finding uh, literature to support her question. So this is her Pico question. In adolescents who present to a primary care clinic, does providing written materials with web-based reference on the health risks associated with vaping compared to receiving this material verbally affect the patient's decision too quick? Okay. Um, and then here, your first step is to fill out that well-built patient-oriented question form, which is at the back here, and which is help to further decide
side, you know, uh, maybe ask more questions and decide what type of question is this, what type of study am I answer, and what kind of searchable terms that she might or he might need to use to do her research later on. And then while you are doing that, think about what are your questions about this case, okay? If she's having hard time finding the literature, you know, before you start the search, and what kind of background information you think might help, you know, with this question. And any other questions that, is this a very clear, well-built, and is this worthy of her time to do this? And you know, by using that, you know, the criteria that we uh, just use, you know, is this an answerable question, a clear constructive, and um, and then after that, where do you get started? Okay, so go ahead. We'll spend a couple minutes. Does that question belong to anybody here? Is that any of our students? No, you filtered that out? No. So we can say bad things about it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not from anybody here. <laughs>
for group one, so it's this side and this side, and you can look at that Mentimeter and go to Mentimeter.com and use 79, 51, 25 as a code, and then post your question there. So that's for this group, and post your questions about that case study. Or any, I mean, suggestions to revise that pickle, or uh, you know, any questions that you have, or comments about that pickle. Yeah. Seventy-nine, assumption that adult, today's adolescent population has more interest in web-based answers or questions than someone from my generation. Mm -hmm. is that the question is, if you give them the information, are they going to look it up? Well, it was written and web-based, so it's potential of like both. And also, is this measurable? How are you going to measure it? Yeah. Are they literate?
we go back to why did they go see the family or the primary care person originally, then they have an uh, underlying pulmonary condition. And uh, for adolescents that use um, adolescents, she's more looking at like uh, 13, you know, between 13 and 18 year old. Are those are those people mostly due to the primary care or due to a, 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 a pediatric office?
right? And that pretty much can say if this research is significant. If that's a popular practice, then it might be significant. If it's not a popular practice, it, it might not worth the time, right? So that's the same, you, you know, we, you know, previously we asked to say, think about is this worth of your time, if it's significant, and then is this clear? Just because she's interested in the topic, you know, also think about in that clinical setting, if this uh, is uh, significant. Let's go back to my slide. So, and I will also ask what kind of different categories this falls into. Smoking sensation, this also falls into uh, psychology, behavioral science, right? And also social science. And so when you're searching for literature, if you are searching MEDLINE and SINO, um, uh, if you're not finding much, then you might want to try some psychology and social science databases to see if there's anything out there generally for smoking cessation and effective interventions. What kind of effective interventions uh, programs that's out there? And then also think about what type of studies, you know, uh, and, and uh, search the literature. See if there's any type of studies that's already been done to support that kind of interventions for smoking cessation, right? Then that might tell you if your pickle question is that, you know, is that really valid, worth of time, clear, uh, you, you know. Or I, I say if nobody done the study, uh, think about it if you do the study yourself. Say if nobody do it. We talk about research, either create new knowledge or fill the gap. If nobody had done it, if you do it, how are you going to do it, right? Think about if I don't find anything, if I do it, how I'm going to measure that outcome? Orally, web-based, you know, what kind of control group? How many numbers of uh, populations that I need to measure in order for me to say that's effective or not effective, right? So, you know, ask those kind of questions. So then where do you find the background information on known effective intervention programs for it? So now I want you to go on, we talk about up to date, right? Let's go on to the up to date and find is any information on smoking sensation for adolescents and young people. Go ahead and go to up to date. If you all have tried up to date. campus username and password. So you need to enter your campus use, username and password in order to access it. 
reference list and look at who, whoever this person was using for their references and then and then um, borrow, beg, steal right. from their reference list to build my reference list. Right. And you find a lot of interrelated articles exactly. about the same topic. So, yeah. So the good thing about this, it gives you the uh, what evidence, what kind of research has been done out there on this topic, like the smoking prevention in primary care office. But it also gives the reference at the end that you can, you know, get more information about it. So you know, so that's why I said doing the literature search first is very important before you form your pickle questions. Because it will give you more knowledge what's been out there already on that specific topic, what's the gap. You know, you need to look at what's literature out there, what kind of gap is out there. 
and then to think about, you know, to fulfill that gap and, to, and also to think about the significance of your research. Okay, so we have those two, two good articles there that I provided her and I said, you know, you go think about your pickle question, know more about this topic and think about how you want to revise it. Okay, so uh, I know it's two o'clock, let's take a, a 10 minute break. I'll come back at 2.15 and then we'll continue. So I don't know if that's if Zofran is completely out of favor of it just creating a stir because it pops up as a category C. Sure. And that all comes out of the late 50s, early 60s. It used to get thalidomide. And it costs just do something to the baby. Oh, horrible, horrible birth defects. Really? Yes. Okay, so I'll have to look up what And so the, for years they used Fenergan, uh -huh. which is also a category C. Oh. And, and they thought that maybe Zofran would be better. But it, I don't know if this, I've not read that there's been any direct correlation with a specific type of uh, birth defect. Mm -hmm. Like benzodiazepines uh, cause cleft lip, uh, cleft lip and cleft palate. It's been linked to that. Yeah. It's She's working tomorrow? Did you say she's working tomorrow? I just put it in here. Can you imagine if we had to? I'd be driving. No, I don't know if that's right. Do you? I don't know. Can we see a brief paper? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Now we always kept Eddie cut short. He was going to be in everything. He was called for the couch and sleep. He was a big cat with it. Former. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but because of the topic, I talk about you know this smoking sensation falls into not only the medical science view, but also social science and behavioral psychological science view. So you want to look at some different disciplinary, and then uh, anybody remember the difference between one search and specific databases I talked about from the last session? One search searches all the databases, right? Yes, almost all the databases. So I suggest to her, instead of search individual database, we can do one search on that topic, and then uh, see what kind of research have been done on that one. And uh, 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 because that it will pull not only the medical uh, related article, but it will also pull social science and psychological type of articles. Yes. Uh, so we have an assignment due on Sunday, mm -hmm. this Sunday, and uh, part of it is that we have to write a paper detailing um, like what search engines we use yes. and why. Um, and like what we searched for. So do you yes. think that it's appropriate to say that we used one search yes. instead of going to like the individual yes. databases? Yes. And uh, yeah, you, you, when you use one search, um, as, as long as you can justify why you use one search. Yeah. One search was searched in the usual customary fashion. I want to show you something and um, say my limited to scholarly. Remember last time we talked about when you do your search, the computer doesn't understand meaning, so you need to think about the term that you use and then do you know uh, Boolean logic to uh, uh, you know to throw more terms to limit. And also pay attention to the subject. But another thing you want to pay attention, you can see is which databases Arco is from. Like this first one, it says from Huffman. Okay? And then if you want to specify, say, which databases Arco is from, and this one is from Signal. Okay? So uh, it also, yeah, it, it, yeah. And by paying attention to that, you also kind of have a clue, you know, for that for that topic, which database provide most answer, and then later on you want, might want to go back to that database and do search and, you know, to find what might be missing from one search. Okay? That help? Yeah, I think, yeah, one search is a valid, you know, source that you can specify just as, I did one search, because my, you know, my topic falls into, and I want to cro search cross disciplinary, and then, you know, from one search, it indicates this article is from what database, you know. Use that phrase, cross dis cross disciplinary searching. Okay. Ooh. Okay. We're all going to have a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All plagiarism. From a cross disciplinary perspective, one search. Searched. <laughs> <laughs> One search was utilized. Utilized in the usual customary fashion. So okay. All of the synonyms of utilized. So, is this case study helpful? You think? Right. Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. So, um, let's go to the lead guide um, to, for specifically for this class. Have you all? Uh, have you guys all um, find my lead guide for the EMT project? Okay. So I talk about the background information, and uh, there's a specific section here that gives you more information on what specifically background information and uh, uh, background questions and foreground questions and also, depending on your topic, you know, some more resources to give you some basic information on, uh, and here, it also lists the up-to-date and signal for my evidence-based care sheet for nursing that I just mentioned. Okay? So that's, um, So that's for um, 
for that. And then for evidence-based search, basically that this link will link directly to that link guide uh, for that 7020 uh, course. Okay, and then it talk about uh, under ask, and also talk about different uh, clinical studies category, and then what type of study methodology support that. Uh, I think today I'm going to, uh, some of you ask, uh, because you have the assignment view, how to read the paper, right? And then how do you know uh, after reading the paper and be able to know what type of study that paper is specifically? So under a phrase, there's a, there's a book I recommend, how to read the paper, the basic of um, evidence-based medicine. And uh, I think I'm going to add, maybe add another, uh, some more information on uh, how you uh, identify um, what type of studies that it is. And another quick tip on how you, um, how do you know in what kind of study that is. Let's go to one of the database. Okay, 
So my last slide and um uh, is about the theory and uh, um you know uh, you all need to find the theoretical framework and uh, why that's important because the theory guides the research process and forms the research question and aids the design, analysis, and interpretation. So that is why you know your DMP project the professor asked you to choose kind of you know you need to find a, a, a research theory that corresponds to your research. And the choice of research design depends on the question asked and the current state of theory development. So um, because of that, and uh, on that lead guide, I create a section uh, under the DMP project. Uh, this is one uh, section for uh, theory. Anybody find it? Anyone? Nobody? I saw you find it. <laughs> Somebody must find it. <laughs> Just don't want to worry here. <laughs> Do you mind to go and show people how you found it? What's your name? Kim. Kim. Okay, thank you. She wants to keep it as a secret. <laughs> she found it. <laughs> so what did she type? Self-care nursing series. Okay. And um, yeah, so um, very good. So you know she can you can type in self care you know what one word dash and nursing theory you know.
know, remember the Boolean logic, but you know, without the Boolean logic, you know, and assume the two ter those two terms to be together, but you know, later in the search result, it will break it up too. So she finds a self-care science in nursing theory and evidence-based practice. And it's actually a e-book that we, uh, you can view online. Very good, thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Somebody yeah, want to give you a prod and you know be more brave, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so that's one that's one method to use to find it. And uh, like I said, uh, besides this, and on this leap guide, I also uh, provided some tips under tips and series in Sino and tells you how to find series in Sino or in the catalog. So our next question in question number four is you are going to find some uh, scholarly articles on nursing models and series related to smoking sensation. And write down what model or theory names that are related to that topic. So, go to question number four. So you just need to go to single. So in that theory uh, uh, class, did you guys have any difficulties at all? Yes? I, I, I saw one now. <laughs> so what's the, what's the biggest challenge? At the, at the time you, you just couldn't find your theory or what? I had a hard time finding the original theory. The original theory? From like 1970 or something. Oh, okay. For a so specific okay. topic? For a specific topic? Yeah. For health promotion. Yeah. Oh, for health promotion. Okay, you eventually found it? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I no? came here. I got like four books. <laughs> it, yeah. You got four books, but it's not I, I guess she said it was okay like, to not have the original original. She ended up saying it was okay to use. Okay, so the, the, it's required for the original or that's what it said in the rubric. Yeah. I see. I feel like a lot of the stuff that I found about the theories didn't need to break it down into like common language. It was just difficult to understand what they're saying for me. That was my biggest issue. I see. They use a lot of fancy words. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing about the theory. Yeah. It's pretty boring, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to read. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I use the boring words. <laughs> okay, anybody have any successful um, 
have any success in sing, you know, finding a theory related to smoking cessation? Any volunteer? <laughs> I mean, forum self care. What? Forum self care. Is that a question? Uh, uh, the question number four is on smoking sensation. That's related to smoking sensation. Need to find a nursing model or theory related to smoking sensation. You are one?
uh, on different type of the uh, nursing theory. Uh, so let's see, uh, nursing model theoretical. So when you click on that, and then it gives you more details on different theories, uh, including say self care, and then maybe you'll find some. <coughs> Yeah, so that's another way to uh, kind of like a brand through, you know, different type of theories and models. Or if you like to do search that way, like you'll just, you know, demonstrate, you can do that too. So, okay. Has anybody else not seen the theory that I used up here? <laughs> I'm not here. send you the syllabus too if you want to see like what it's asking sure. us yes, to do. Yes. I just know that we are like we're spending a lot of time doing these assignments more because we don't understand what's wanted of us. Okay. So maybe if more we understood how to make this table then it would be fairly time efficient. Yeah. My schedule is you know the, my uh, next session is acquired. You know first is asked today and next is acquired is to search for the evidence and the third one is the phrase. But then when you're talking about it seems that I need to move the appraise up. Um, yeah, I will think about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I guess we uh, finish uh, ahead of time. You guys are be happy. Thank you very much for all your attention. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.